So with the ultimate goal of one player being able to host a server and other players being able to join just as simple cubes that you can move around, um, we're going to need to look at the Bolt Asset menu. To do this, you go to Window, Bolt, and then Assets. And uh, this will bring up a whole lot of stuff. We don't need to look at any of these in particular yet, but um, states, objects, commands, and events are the four types of assets that Bolt uses. And um, what an asset is, is everything in here will be replicated and synchronized um, over the network, and Bolt will do all this stuff automatically. Um, so that sounds like a lot to take in, and we'll get to each one of these individually, but um, let's just start with states. Um, let us go ahead and create a new state. And uh, since we are just going simple, we can start with cubes. Um, they actually already have a cube state here, so we will name ours custom cube state. Um, and then we will add a new property called cube transform. Uh, one more thing we need to do is change float to transform. Um, and every time you edit something in the Bolt Asset menu, uh, you need to compile this, um, and you will understand what that is later, just for now. Understand, every time you edit something in here, you need to either click this button right there, or you can go to Assets, Bolt, and then Compile Assembly. Uh, you should see something that is not yellow. Oh, perfect. Success. That's what we're looking for. So the next thing we're going to do is create the cube um, that will be the prefabs which our players spawn as. So you can go ahead and close out of these menus. And then um, just on the scene, scene itself, or I guess the hierarchy, you can go to object, 3D object, right click, um, and then go to, uh, go ahead and create a cube. Um, this cube, if it's not 000, zero, zero all that zeroed out, you can right-click it and then click Reset, and it'll put um, all the stats right there. Um, and then we want to make this a Bolt Entity. And to do that, we just type in Bolt Entity, start typing it in, and it will pop up there. Um, and the first time you do this, you'll get some errors. Um, there's usually a couple more errors in this, um, but they're easily fixable. Um, you just go to State and then select the state we just made, which is custom cube state for us. Um, and then after you do that, uh, always, always, um, when you mess around with Bolt, uh, just go to Assets, Bolt, and then Compile Assembly, um, and wait for it to say Success, which um, it looks like it did. There's two of them, since I clicked it twice. Um, and then we need to make a prefab out of it. And that is easy enough. We just make a folder. Well, this part is optional, but I prefer to keep myself organized. So make a folder called prefabs. And go ahead, enter. And then you simply drag and drop your cube into the prefabs. Um, and then you can remove it from the scene. The next thing we're going to do for our scene is simply create a ground. Um, and the easiest way to do that is just to create a plane. Um, and then you see here it's not zeroed out, so I'll just go ahead and go reset. And then to make this big, I'll just go 10, 10, and 1 is probably fine. No, I take that back. We'll just go 10, 10, 10. Perfect. Um, and then we can rename this ground as so. And um, to be able to differentiate the ground from our players, let's go ahead and create a material. And let's just name this ground mat for material. And um, throw this bad boy on the ground right there. And then you see it won't be a change, or it won't have changed until you change the color of the material itself. So um, we'll just go ahead. You can make yours whatever you want. I'll stick with a blue for mine. And um, there we have our ground. Uh, to get a good position for our camera for this tutorial, um, let's go ahead and go to game and then adjust it accordingly. Um, according to the tutorial they gave, this should be 10, negative 10, and then rotate it. 
at 50 degrees on the x-axis. Now this looks pretty, uh, but um, trust me, when we're actually in game, it will look more impressive. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the actual coding. So first, let's go ahead and create a script and call it network callbacks. And I'll explain why later, but for now, just go ahead and boot up Visual Studio. Perfect, once that finishes, go ahead and remove all this right here. We won't be needing it. Um, and instead of deriving from mono behavior, derive from bolt.global event listener. So for us, we're gonna wanna start with um, on scene load local done and with photon you always need to write it as public override void that's always what you do with any photon and then scene load local done just go ahead and double tap tab um, and then we can erase this right here and move on to the next step and that next step will be instantiating the cube over the network and if you know coding that is actually very simple um, it's pretty much just instantiate, except you throw a bolt network dot instantiate. Um, and then what do we want to do? We want to do bolt prefabs dot cube. And if you don't see that, you find that um, from right here. We made that earlier. It's the cube. Um, if it's showing error right here, you just have to connect it and then run the uh, bolt compile assembly right there. That's only if it's showing an error. For us, it should not be. And then we need a spawn position. So let's just go ahead and create um, a var spawn position and set that equal to a new vector three. My typing is very off today. And we can go random dot range. We'll do maybe negative eight to eight, zero on the y axis my bad that's supposed to be a negative how oh, sloppy and then on the z axis we want to do another random dot range and again negative eight to eight now for the actual instantiating of the cube we can just set it equal to the spawn position and then for its rotation we just set it to quaternion dot identity and um there we have our cube Perfect. So when a scene finishes loading, Bolt Network will instantiate a cube at a random position on the X and Z axis. Um, and now we need a menu scene to actually load um, the game from. So let's go ahead and create a scene. We can go ahead and name it whatever you want. I'll name it Menu. Drop that bad boy into the scenes right there and um, open it up. Perfect. So we're just going to make a very simple menu scene uh, with two buttons, host game and join game. So go ahead and create a button. It will automatically create a canvas for us. And we can rename this button to host game. Um, and then for visuals, I'll just move it up to zero, zero. Um, First, name this host button so you can differentiate. And then go ahead and just copy and paste that guy. Name it the next one, join button. Um, change the text to join game. Again, this can be whatever you want. But um, for this case, we'll just move it down maybe 50 or so. Now that that's done, we're going to add some functionality to the buttons. So go ahead and create another script. And let's name this menu open it up and again we can just remove everything here we won't be needing it and once again derive this from bolt dot global event listener right so now we'll make the functions that are called from the buttons so first let's make a uh, host or start server button so public void and we can name it whatever. I will name it start server. And all we need to do here is simply put bolt launcher dot start server. Perfect. 
Um, and then if you're joining a game, it will look pretty similar. We can do start client. And then um, this should look similar, bolt launcher dot start client. So when start server is done, we want to do two things. We want to name the server and then start the scene. To do that, um, Bolt already has a function. So we go ahead and do public override void and then Bolt start done. Go ahead, press tab. Um, and then we can say if Bolt network dot is server, mean, meaning um, it was called from here, you're the host of the game. Um, we can set the match name equal to whatever you want. I'll just name this um, test match. And then after that, simply say bolt network dot set server info and set that equal to the string we just named match name. And then it takes a second argument. We don't need it, so we can just say no. And after that, we want to load the scene. And we do that over the Bolt network as well because we're doing multiplayer. So we simply say Bolt network dot load scene. And then there won't be any scenes here because we need to drag and drop them in the build settings. So open up, I don't know if you saw what I did, file, build settings. Um, and then drag and drop the two scenes we have. We want the menu scene to be first. And then the sample scene, I didn't change the name, so that's the one with the cube in the ground. Um, and that should be good there. So sample scene is the name of the scene we want to load. So we want to load scene, sample scene. Or if you change the name, enter that there. Right, so this is good for our server. Now we need the client. Again, Bolt has something Bolt has a function for us, so we go ahead and call it with public override void. And then for the client, we're going to want to use session list updated. Go down to it, press tab. Um, and this looks complicated, but all we need to do is throw a for each method. And then for each um, session in session list which is right here and this is all the photon stuff so this goes to the photon um, servers and looks through each of them and we say we um, store the photon session as a UDP session so UDP session and we can name that photon session set it equal to the session dot value as UDP session. Um, and I am not making this up, guys. I'm getting this straight from their tutorial. So if you want more clarification, I encourage you to go check that out. They can probably explain it better than I can. And then we do an if statement if photon session dot source. Goodness, cannot spell today. Dot source equals the UDP session dot boton bolt network dot connect connect my apologies photon session Again, this is very complex, and I do highly encourage you to go check out their website. I'll leave it linked in the description. But basically, what this does is it loops through all the sessions um, that are in Photon on their website, and it will connect to the first one uh, that it finds. So now with all the coding done, we need to connect these two public functions up to their buttons. So first, let us save everything. Perfect. And then go to our menu, host button, and we can add an event. Um, and then we need the menu to be in the game scene. So let's just go to the canvas and uh, drag and drop the menu script right there. So now from the host button, now 
we should be able to just drag and drop the canvas, select the menu, and then as this is our host button, we just start a server. And do the same thing for the join button, just add an on click for it, drag and drop in the canvas game object which we just attached our menu script to, go ahead and navigate to menu, and then um, call start client. And guys, one very important thing I forgot to do was um, go back over to the network callback script and attach right above here, bolt global behavior. This is what I was referring to, which will um, detect if a network callback script has been instantiated. And if not, when bolt is started by either start server or start client, bolt will automatically instantiate this script and um, if we have a disconnect script, we don't right now, we don't need one, um, but we'll automatically destroy this script. So that is very important. Right, now for the moment of truth. We're actually ready to go ahead and build the project. But first, go ahead and go to player settings. Um, make sure under resolution and presentation that run in background is selected because we're going to be working with two instances, one of Unity and one as a separate build, and it would just be very annoying if it doesn't run in the background. So now that that is out of the way, go ahead and build and run the project. If it's the first time you do it, um, it will ask you where to name it and where you want to store it. Go ahead and do that. After it's done, you'll get something that looks like this. Make sure it's on windowed so we can see both the Unity editor and the separate build play and it will pop up just with the very simple menu right there and then we can go ahead and play this and i usually like to host the game on the editor but it doesn't really matter um, so host game and you can already see here this is how you see bolt is working all that stuff um, is basically just bolt debugging itself and there's our actually our little cube right there you can see it um, we can't move around yet, but that bolt little entity means it is over the network. And then for our build, join game, drum roll please, you can see bolt working. Um, when it finds another server, which it should soon, there we go, it should receive a punch through, bam, all that working. There's one cube, bam, synchronized, and if you can see, imagining that these are two separate computers, there are our two cubes.